Hello friends, this is lesson 2 of Big Data Hadoop with Python. So in this lesson we are going to cover the following topics. The first topic is the different types of uh, data, prerequisites of big data, why big data analytics and then types of big data analytics and I will provide some examples for them for better understanding. Let's start with the first topic. So the first topic is different types of data. As you remember in previous lectures we talked about big data and we said big data means the data whose size is big. Then we talked about the features of big data. There is something we had if you remember four V's and four V's uh, one V was the variety of big data if you remember variety that is also the feature of big data means in big data we have different types of data so that is why we have to discuss today the different types of data what we have here in big data so here we have structured data we have semi structured data and then we have unstructured data so collection of all these three types is nothing but big data so we have structured data, semi-structured data, and unstructured data, and that is nothing but our big data. So now let's see one by one what is structured data, and what is unstructured data, and what is semi-structured data. So let's start with the first one, structured data. So what is structured data? So structured data means the data which has a defined repeating pattern. This you have to remember which has a defined repeating pattern or it is based on primitive data types we can say. So if the data is in this form it is based on some repeating pattern or it is based on primitive data types. So this type of data is called structured data and you know that it is easier to sort that, read that, process and analyze and also all these operations will happen very fast it is faster here so examples are given here like we have integer numbers we have float by numbers we have date we have uh, string we have boolean these are called primitive data types and uh, process of this type is very easy for the system to sort to read to process and to analyze because they are simple and uh, it is also faster for processing and analyzing these types of data. Now let's talk about the sources of structured data. So the source is the first source that we can say is relational databases. So the data which is stored in relational databases, there you know that we have tables and these tables are connected to each other. There is a relationship between the tables. So the data is stored in the form of rows and columns and each cell can have only one value. So it may be like integer, float, character, boolean. It is based on primitive data types. So relational database, the data there is nothing but structured data. Uh, flat files for example if you consider excel so excel sheet there we have again rows and columns the data is stored in the form of rows and columns so again it is a type of structured data if you go to data warehouse there we have multi-dimensional databases so that is also a kind of structured data legacy databases means old versions what we have uh, so they are all based on primitive data types and uh, sorting, reading, all operations are faster compared to semi-structured and unstructured because they are predefined, like they are, uh, they are following some repeating pattern based on that. So the process and uh, reading, sorting, all these operations are, uh, will be faster there. Now let's talk the second type of data which is called semi-structured data. So semi-structured means it is between structure and unstructured data something. So the data contains here tags and markup elements in order to separate the elements and generate hierarchies of records and files. So here in semi-structures or semi-structured data, what do we have? We have some tags, we have some markup elements and these elements are used in order to separate the elements and generate hierarchies of records and files. Example. 
Now, table value separated by comma, you know that those who are good in database, they can understand what is uh, like uh, database normalization. There we have something. Uh, each and every cell in a column should have only a single value. If there are more than one value and they are separated by comma or any other special operator, so what we say, then we say the table is not normalized. So if the table is not normalized means that type of data is called same structure data. Maybe they are separated by comma, maybe some other special symbols, the values are separated by uh, some like comma or some other special like a slash like that. So that is called okay semi structured data the sources for semi structured data what we have here web data in form of cookies which are stored in browsers if you remember so extensible markup language so we have uh, data exchange formats such as javascript object notation so these are the examples the sources uh, for semi structured data now let's talk about the unstructured data friends so unstructured data, if you understood the structured data, so it is totally opposite to that. It means it is not following any repeating pattern. It is not based on repeating or sorry, primitive data types. So uh, here the data which has no repeating pattern, approximately, see here, 70 to 80 percent of the data is unstructured in big data. This you have to remember. It means the big data is heterogeneous. Of data it is not of homogeneous data here we have different types of data unstructured data we can say in a large amount of data here in big data we can say it is unstructured data uh, as you see here 70 to 80 percent of the data what we have in big data is nothing but unstructured data now the examples are given here like metadata data about the data inconsistent data data from the files like we have social media websites satellites etc then we have different formats like emails or the text audio video images these are the examples now let's see the sources for unstructured data the source the, the biggest source here we have is the social media then we have the mobile data there we have like as we explained in previous lecture like sending and receiving the messages every time the mobile phone is sending your location to the servers like that so again we have text both internal to external to, uh, to an organization so the data which comes to the organization with it, it, it is internal or external internal means the organization itself is generating the data maybe they are using some dbmss uh, they are maybe they are having like uh, any MIS system for storing their daily transactions data in that or maybe they are accessing external data from any like social media like that so these are the sources for unstructured data and these are the examples and here you have to understand that in unstructured data there is no repeating pattern and approximately 70 to 80 percent of big data is nothing but unstructured data now as we said here 70 to 80 percent of big data is nothing but unstructured data so there are some challenges you have to know about the and um, sorry unstructured data so what are the challenges the first challenge what we have here is identifying the unstructured data this is important identifying the unstructured data that can be processed so it is difficult so like uh, it is a difficult task to identify because there are different formats they are having different structures like that so identifying is difficult it is a challenge then the second one is sorting and organizing and also arranging unstructured data in different sets and formats so it is again as we said it has different uh, sets different formats so it is difficult to sort and organize and combining and linking so combining and linking unstructured data is uh, like in more structure format to derive any logical conclusions out of available information so it is difficult like to understand and see the the hidden patterns how to analyze that and how to find the relation the correlation between uh, the data and the variable so it is somehow difficult and the last challenge what we have here is the costing 
So the costing here in terms of storage space and human resources, as we said, it is not uh, easy. It takes lots of size because it is a type of big data. So uh, like it needs some data analyst, specialist and we have data scientists needed to deal with exponential growth of unstructured data. So these are nothing but the challenges what we are facing while working with unstructured data. So now let's talk about the second topic here. So the second topic is prerequisites for big data. Now if a person wants to be a big data analyst or a developer so what are the skills or what are the qualifications we can say what is the professional should have that person so here it says that big data professionals can have various education background this you have to remember it is not like only computer science students or computer science uh, professional those who are graduated from computer science they can work with big data it is not like that maybe they are from economics background physics statistics maths computer science engineering and but the, the skills are important here should have the following skills now if a person wants to be a big data analyst so these are the skills should have the person the first skill is understanding of Hadoop ecosystem and also the components there like what we have here Hadoop distributed file system is here then we have MapReduce, Pig is there, Hive is there, Spark is there so these are the things should have the the person should have understanding of these things and also the knowledge of natural language processing natural language processing means the ability to give the computer and the computer can understand and interpret human languages like that so here we have knowledge of maths statistics these are also important and knowledge of machine learning how to model the data how to develop a model like that uh, big sorry data science how to clean the data how to analyze the data and how to visualize the data and also how to remove the out layers all those things what what you know about it sorry big sorry data science those things are also important and these are the skills for big data analysts maybe from any background economics physics bio uh, statistics or maybe like computer science maths engineering like that no problem but the skills these skills are important for the big data analysts now big data developer also we have here the big data developer has uh, should have the following skills like programming skills in Java maybe R maybe Python or uh, here we have like Hadoop Hive in HBase and also understanding of Hadoop distributed file system MapReduce knowledge of Zookeeper Flume and Scoop these things are important and these are the skills required for big data developer so if a person wants to be a big data analyst or a big data developer these skills are important they should have the knowledge of these things so now let's talk about the okay third topic here what we have why big data analytics why we are analyzing the big data what is the requirement here why we are doing all these things now see as we know big data is large in size as we define here big data whose size is large and it is complex as i discussed because 70 to 80 percent of the data is unstructured it is really like uh, complex how to identify the unstructured data and also according and based on the cost these are the challenges if you remember we talked about the challenges and uh, we have okay big data is large in size complex in types which can be collected from different sources and ranges from terabytes to exabytes which cannot be handled by common traditional dbmss so this is the definition again for the big data now what is our job what we have to do now here our job is to uncover the information such as hidden patterns unknown correlation relationships and there we have market trends and customer preferences that can help the organization make informed business decision 
Now the data is there. The data is there as we said the huge amount of data may reside unutilized at unknown servers and by the evolution of big data this data can be accessed processed and converted to something meaningful and that is called knowledge or information it is important now according to atul butte stanford what he is saying hiding within those mounts of data is knowledge is knowledge that that would change the life of a patient or change the whole world so we said big data here a huge amount of data reside and un, reside unutilized at unknown servers so it is not considered as dummy data it is the data stored there it is our task as a data scientist or as a big data analyst so we have to take that data analyze the data process the data and convert it to something meaningful useful so that uh, meaningful and useful thing is called the knowledge and that could that would change the life of a patient or it will change the whole world now so here we have the real power of big data lies in its analysis processing studying and implementing the conclusions derived from analysis of big data that can help you to collect accurate data take timely and more informed strategic decisions target the right set of audience and customers and increase the benefits reduce the wastage and cost so that is why we are going for big data analytics so i hope you understood from these things from examples which i gave you so that is why we have to analyze and we have to go for big data analytics to to extract the knowledge from the data to find the hidden patterns from the data and also the relation the correlationship there between the variables the parameters so then from that we can like we can change the world if possible or we can change like the life of a patient maybe change maybe we can extract something that could change the life of a patient that could change the whole world so these are the important things about data big data analytics now let's talk about the types of big data analytics and there are three types of analytics friends three types of analytics we have here the first one is descriptive analytics so what is descriptive analytics here what happened in the business these things are discussed it means in the previous what was the reason for the failure or what was the reason when the the business come down so these things are discussed it is okay it analyzes a database to provide information on trends of past or current business events that uh, that can help the managers and also plan leaders etc to develop a road map for the future so based on past data and current data based on that the developers or the managers can can develop a road map for the future so here what it is uh, like what are discussed here the frequency of events what event happened how many times it happened so operation cost and the reason for the failure so these things are discussed and after these things are discussed then we go for predictive analytics so what is predictive analytics here the predictive analytics says what would happen or what could happen now here understanding first we have to understand the reason the frequency of events the operation cost and also all the problems what we discussed uh, from past data and current data those things are understanding first then predicting the future by statistical models as we said like uh, machine learning is required statistic is required here in big data to like to develop a model or design a model and also different forecast techniques and machine learning these things we we are applying and then we go for future and we will predict the future or the result now the third one here analytics what we have prescriptive analytics we have here what should we do so what should we do means 
okay based on the data obtained from descriptive and predictive analysis and by using the optimization techniques we should determine the finest substitute or solution for the problem so this is the final thing what we have to do that we have to prevent not in the future to, to happen the same thing like the failure the failure what we have or the reason for the for the business which for which the business came down so that things are discussed here here it is understand and develop the model and here we have to again what we have to do and based on these two types of analytics what we have like descriptive and predictive analysis we have to optimize like uh, using the optimization techniques and we should determine the finest substitute or solution for the problem so these are the types of analytics friends what we discuss here three types of analytics and then i talked about why we are going for big data analytics i gave you some reasons that is important then we talked about here the prerequisites for big data and then we talked about the big data analyst okay prerequisites for big data developer and then we talked about the different types what we have here data types we have structured data type we have semi structure unstructured, unstructured data and uh, we defined each and every one and gave some examples for them i hope you understood all these things from this lecture friends